Pearl farming isn't the only trade that's suffering along China's coast, and climate change is one of the reasons. Monica Medina joins me now. She is CEO of Our Daily Planet, an e-newsletter covering the environment and climate change in the United States. So what are the impacts we're seeing? Uh, you know, uh, I imagine there are other industries that are being impacted. Give me a sense of, of what we're seeing in China. In China, the biggest impacts really are seafood and fisheries, which is a really important thing to the Chinese people and um, for their food security. So there are tremendous impacts with the shifting of uh, fish stocks and just the loss of fish stocks overall and the changes in the ocean's chemistry making it hard for not only pearl um, pearls to be developed but also the seafood that lives in those shells as well. Um, so that's an, an enormous impact. Another big impact is on um, coastal development. Uh, all the industries that live along the coast are impacted by storm surge, which is also tremendously um, impacted by the you know, climate and the shifting climate, the warming oceans, um, creating greater storm surges through all across uh, China's coast. Yes, yeah, it's been remarkable to watch. Yes. You know, it's so interesting, though. I saw a documentary, I think it must have been about two years ago, about the coral reefs and, and how they're dying, climate change impacting them. And it kind of gets to the heart of what you're saying. Like, we don't really think about how the, all these... All these, in, it's it's all layered when you look at. I mean, it's it's coral, but it's acting. And one, it's almost a domino effect, isn't it? It is. They're all interconnected, and then we humans impact it more. So when we overfish, then that takes away sort of um, the larger fish at the top of the food chain that impacts everything underneath it. So the things that China um, can do are, you know, things like better fisheries management, like reining in some of their distant water fishers who are out there. In the ocean, taking up the, the larger uh, species that really make the whole ecosystem in, in various parts of the world work. And so China, China's coastal waters matter, but because China fishes in so many other parts of the world, it matters how they treat the oceans everywhere. It's interesting. I was looking at your bio, and you're on a couple of boards, of, a couple of nonprofits. One that really kind of jumped out at me is called Truth, and that's used to uh, environmental threats. And the reason why that comes to mind is I just talked to a guy who, who uh, went to images uh, 40 years looking at the Himalayas and the glacier. Um, how important are those images going to be as we move forward in stating the case? Because there are still some people out there saying, well, I don't know that this is climate. But this is real evidence, isn't it? The evidence is entirely behind the notion that this in either country, in the U.S. or in China, to see the impacts, to see the fish stock shifting, and things like um, uh, satellite imagery and all kinds of new technology um, to um, make it clearer and clearer to people. But I think even China's Belt and Road Initiative and its Arctic Initiative um, show that uh, are, are are ways that we can see the development happening. China's interested in the Arctic because they'd like a shipping route across the northern um, sea so that they can cut their shipping times dr dramatically. So we can see it in all kinds of ways, from the shrinking sea ice mm. to the melting glaciers to the shifting stocks um, to the weather patterns that are changing. Yeah, it's fascinating. Monica, thanks so much for coming. Oh, in. my really pleasure. Appreciate.